So for those of you acquainted with the lore of me and my existence, I just kind of popped into a like reality one day, just spawned. Like I just started existing, no parents, no bloodline. And I hear all this talk about parents and father figures and I didn't really have a frame of reference, but hearing about it, it sounds pretty nice. I kind of want one. I kind of want a father. A, a dad, you call it? A daddy, even? You know, apparently there's a game that is like a great matchmaker for that kind of thing. It's called Dream Daddy. I've heard it in passing for a long ass time. It's like a dad dating sim. No quite, this isn't how you get adopted. Wrong game, wrong game. Nope, I know what I'm getting into. Also, if you enjoy this video, I will be streaming the follow-up to it on Monday, uh, January 31st at around 8 p.m. EST, 5 p.m. PST. If you're a foreigner, do the time conversions on your own because I hate foreigners. Also, there will be this big card that you can click or tap at the end of the video that'll take you to another one like it. Also, also use code quite on G Fuel for 10% off. It's really good. I, it, this looks like a meme, but I am actually addicted to this shit. It's really good. <laughs> Dad, wake up. Wake up. Pretend to be dead. Five more minutes. Finally open my eyes and sit up. I'm lying in the middle of the living room, spooning a moving box. I yawn and stretch. Morning, Manda Panda. Ugh. A child? Yes, I'm a father of this game. Which is a terrible thing to imagine in real life. Bill's your dad? Hmm. Me. <laughs> Slim tank bod. I'm definitely athletic, I think. I'm huge. I'm big as fuck. Come on, come on, guys. Just, I'm, I'm huge. Guys, I'm huge. He look gross? Well, yeah. He's, like, barely a person right now. Uh, is there anything in this that looks like a hoodie? Oh, shit! Yo, oh, yeah, that's that, that's gotta be the one, don't it? I'll, ju I'll just go for the fucking- This is, like, the safest haircut to have in this day and age. <laughs> I like this a lot. The fucking, like, the amount of variety you got. I'm, wanna, I'm, I'm trying to look tired as hell. Green hair, because, you know, I got green hair. Gap tooth mouth. <laughs> Could slide a credit card through that. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep it subtle because I'm a really subtle guy, you know? Okay, guys, I just can't do the twink bot. It don't look right. It, it's it's hard to look at for me. Can't do it. I'm sorry. Take some creative license with my look in this game. Um quite quote. You need clothes? I, I imagine you put on clothes later. Did you fall asleep packing? I got most of it done, I think. Searching around the room, it looks like I did a pretty good job. Every box is sealed except for one. Wait, straggler. Looking into the box, I see a bunch of old photos and little photo albums. Whoa, I haven't seen these in years. I pull out one of the dusty albums from the top of the pile and we can begin looking through it. The only way your father and I, the only way your mother, I'm gonna say father, the only way your father and I could get you to stop crying was to put the sunglasses on you. Whenever we tried to take them off, you'd start crying again. I skipped clothes? Is there a way to go back? I gotta add my clothes back. Yolks on the nipples, I like that shirt a lot. Definitely not the suit, that's too much. I'm gonna keep it casual, plain white tee. Burger, 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 burger. Okay, we got it right this time. Neither of us say a word. Eh, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say adopted probably. Kind of a funny story. The day we brought you home, we got into a car accident. It wasn't anything big, just a little fender bender in the parking lot. But of course I was freaking out. And the little old lady who crashed into us was freaking out, and I didn't know what to do. It was your fault. We hadn't adopted you, it wouldn't have happened. Come on, pops, we gotta finish packing. The moving van won't wait forever. Amanda and I pile into the car to take one last look at the old house. So many memories here. Hard to believe your father and I bought this place almost 20 years ago. Hey, remember when I shattered the front window playing catch? You always had very strong arms. Hey, remember when I shattered the other pr front window pretending to be a robot who breaks windows? I don't know, you're like, if it smells like a robot that smashes windows, looks like a robot that smashes windows, and smashes windows. I'm gonna I'm say it's a robot that smashes windows. You were a very imaginative child. Hey, remember when I broke the, win the back window? We get it, Amanda, you break stuff. And there'll be plenty more stuff for me to break in the new place. Pull up to the new house and step outside. The lawn is freshly mown and the for sale sign is still in the yard. I like this place. It's nice and quaint. If it was like me and one other person, this would be like an easy place to live in. And with a swift kick from Amanda, the for sale sign is no more. Nice form, sweet pig. I got a problem with authority, clearly. Hey, it's a dog. Wait, false alarm. It was just a funny shaped rock. Okay, you little prick. If you want to see real dogs so bad, let's go to the park around the corner. This game's, this game's getting a little too wholesome for me. It's a bit too domestic for a quite straight man. We usually play some fucked up shit. This, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell you now, this is such a nice change of pace from the fears to fathom strange man. My heart is not pounding out of my chest. It's it, This is like really good for my blood pressure. I'll tell you that. We walk for a while and eventually end up in a small park. It's a pretty crowded, but Amanda spots a nice empty bench. We start to make our way over to it when uh, I punt a toddler on reflex. That's like a bonding activity for me and my child. Heads up. Oh. Ow! Frisbee suddenly hits me in the face. A corgi with a neat plaid handkerchief tied around his neck bounds up to me. Did you throw this thing at my head? He runs around in a circle and nudges my leg with his nut. Oh god, this is the cutest dog. But where do I pet the dog? I'm not doing butt pats, dude. That's that, that's like too strong of a first impression, I think. A guy in a Hawaiian shirt jogs over to us and takes the frisbee from me. You know, frisbees are traditionally caught with your hands, not your face. Well, you're traditionally not supposed to aim for people's heads. Ha! I'm just messing with you. I'm Brian, by the way. Damn, big guy, big guy. I'm quite, and this is my daughter. I look over at Amanda only to find her sitting on the ground, rubbing the dog's tummy. 
Hi, your dog's cool. Ah, uh, old Maxwell sure loves the attention. It's great to see father and daughter out here on a sunny day. Where's yours? Brian gestures over to a grassy knoll where a young girl sits on a checkered blanket. She's reading a book bigger than her head. She puts it down and heads over to us. Uh. This is Daisy. She's reading the Brothers Kar Karamazov. Kar Brothers Karamazov? I don't speak Russian. Her teacher tells me that she has the reading comprehension skills of a high schooler. My natural dad instincts kicks in. I must brag about my child's accomplishments. Oh, there's nothing! There's nothing! <laughs> oh no, it's happening. <laughs> Brian, go on, Daisy. Tell him about yourself. Um, I... That's my girl. Amanda, get in there. Amanda, okay. Okay. Ooh, is this layout not, like, protected under, like, trademark law? I, I won't question it. It's great. Item, grade card, band-aid, child art, spelling bee photo? Definitely child art. You unfurl your wallet to reveal a tiny copy of a drawing of a cornucopia Amanda did in the first grade. Brian. Cute. It isn't very impressive, but Amanda's genuinely appreciates you holding on to it. Ryan loses 10 HP. You regain 20. Daisy just started a weekly chess club at her elementary school computer lab. Dang, my high school doesn't have a chess club or a computer lab. Yeah, so we we're, so we're broke is what you're saying. We go to a we go to a poor person school. Not that there's anything wrong with that. You lose 10 HP. Quite's HP. 90. Okay, we're, we're we're still in the clear right now. Fumbling through your phone's browser, you manage to pull up a photo of Amanda winning her 10th grade spelling bee. Wow, congratulations, Amanda. Daisy is getting prepped for her annual spelling bee right now. Hopefully, this will be your third win in a row. Daisy here has all of her adult teeth. Never had a cavity either. Amanda self-consciously pushes her lips together to hide her teeth. It's extra power. Fuck, I'm dead. I'm dead. Boy, it's been such a treat getting to meet you two. <laughs> Did he have to add insult to injury by being such a gracious winner? So I take it you guys are new to the neighborhood? We just moved in. Do you live around here? Yeah, we live in that cul-de-sac down next to the shafi shop. What a coincidence. That's where we live, too. Yeah, Daisy and I are in that little ranch-style house in the corner. No, that house. It's just like ours, but slightly bigger and better landscaped. Does this guy have to outdo me at everything? What a lovely place. Well, I don't want to take up any more of your time. Really nice meeting you guys. You'll have to stop by at some point. Do you get the feeling that he was trying to one-up us? Hmm. Trying and succeeding. I can't believe that kid's only 10. What was I even doing at a rage? I believe you had a bit of a thing for horses. Let's, let's, hit the let's hit the coffee shop. Man, this is such a convenient walking distance from our place. What's wrong? Why would I go somewhere else and drink coffee on a couch when I could just drink better coffee at home on my own couch and not have to make awkward eye contact with other people? Dad, are you just afraid to meet new people? Yes, Amanda. We walk inside. <gasps> oh no, he's hot. The inside of the coffee shop is incredibly warm and inviting. Vinyl records line the walls in patron's lounge on well-worn couches. Some cool tunes spin on a record player next to a little stage. Welcome to the coffee spoon, guys. How's it going? What's with the name? Oh, it's, uh, kind of dumb. It gets mentioned in this poem I like, and I thought it was a good idea at the time. And I suppose now it's still a good idea because, like, the business is still running? But people ask me that question all the time, and I give them the same answer every time, and now I'm standing here rambling, and I'm sure we're all getting more and more uncomfortable the more I keep talking. But man, we're in it now, and I can't stop. Fuck, he's so charismatic! Holy shit! Guys, I think this might be the one. Someone's- is someone saying Creeper because- Oh, man. We gotta, dude, we hit it. We hit so, so early in the game, too. Jesus Christ. I'm gonna just go black coffee. I don't need the add, the add-ons. Do you want that in small, medium, or biggie smalls? Wait, is it big- is biggie smalls big or small? I should change that, shouldn't I? Matt sets to making our drinks, and Amanda and I take a seat on one of the couches. What's his deal? Let the man make his puns. They're cooler bands than you listen to anyways. That's just fucking me, man. I got- I got- I listen to JPEG Mafia. Come on, guys! I got- I got taste! Fuck! <laughs> Across the way, a man catches my eye. He sits by himself, rooting over a cup of coffee. Our eyes meet, just for a moment. I hastily look away, hoping he didn't catch me staring. Who is that? That spring trap? Yeah. Okay, now that we're full of caffeine, where to? Can we got a gamer house? Oh, let's go. First visitor already. I walk over to the door and open it. Hello. Uh. A handsome, clean-cut man stands at my door, brandishing a plate of cookies. Oh, where are my manners? My name is Joseph. I'm your next door neighbor. I don't like the way his, like, belt defies the laws of physics. Oh yes, hi, quite. That's what my name is. I saw the moving van, I thought I'd bring over some cookies. My daughter Christy wanted me to let you know she baked them herself. Matt would have baked those cookies himself. It's just, it's all I'm saying. It's not, it's not like it's a competition. But between you and me, she just sprinkled in the chocolate chips. Oh, okay, that might, that changes the dynamic. Well, thanks for the cookies. Ooh, cracker nuts. Ooh, cracker nuts. The fuck is that voice line? That's my daughter. Her name is Amanda. She's a charmer. Daughters are tough. Sons are also tough. There'd have to be something wrong with you to try to raise more than two. I have four kids. Fuck. Fumbled that bag. This is the first neighbor I've met, and my social life is already in a tailspin. I wonder if it's too late to move again. Is the missus around? No, not anymore. He died. But I'm, I'm, I'm usually better in social interactions than this. Like, I'm not, like, I'm not, like, fucking... Listen, I'm not anybody's first, like, go-to for, like, how to be a sociable person. But Jesus Christ! Wow, this is uncomfortable. We stand there quietly for a moment, cutely aware of how awkward we both made things. No, I, th I think it was mostly me, because there's, like, more tactful ways to say that shit. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> throwing a barbecue for the cul-de-sac, and I'd love for you to come by and meet the rest of the neighbors in our community. That sounds great. My daughter and Amanda, my daughter Amanda and I would love to stop by. Well, neighbor, I'll see you at 3 p.m. sharp on Saturday. Sure thing, neighbor. Hey, in all seriousness, raising a kid on your own can't be easy. If you ever need to talk about stuff, I'm the youth minister at a church down the street. Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't really consider myself a youth. You look pretty young to me, but suit yourself. <laughs> Where's the blush command? God, God fucking damn it. There it is. There it is. It took fucking four goddamn tries, but there it is. That was embarrassing. Amanda walks back into the living room, crumbs on her face and cookie in hand. Joseph probably wants his plate back. And remember, we need to make a positive first impression here. Keep it light. Hey guys, is your dad around? That's a weird question to ask a bunch of kids. Those two look like they're from The Shining. They all just stare at us blankly. We just wanted to, uh, geez, these definitely are Joseph's kids. They all look exactly like him. Kids' eyes boring to us as we scurry away. I need something to get my mind off those carbon copy kids. I need to rest my eyes. Mm. You've been awake for what, three hours? And that's three hours too many. As we're walking home, I hear heavy footsteps come up behind us. Quite, bro. I turn around and I'm greeting a familiar face jogging up to us. A wooga? A wooga? Craig? Bro. Wow, I haven't seen Craig in forever. <laughs> yeah, I cleaned up my act. Cleaned up his act? Are you kidding me? He's ripped. Amanda, this is my friend Craig. We went to college together. We were roommates for a while, too. Fuck! Ooh, it's one of them rekindling an old flame. Oh, fuck! Amanda, dude, you probably don't remember me, but you're so big now. Hello, and hello, cute baby. Aw, uh, thank you. The last time I saw you, I think you were about her size. Are you... Babysitting? Nah, dude. River's my kid. Man, it has been a long time. How's Smashley doing? I mean, Ashley. Ashley is her name. He actually still goes by Smashley, and uh, we got divorced last year. It's old news. We take turns taking care of River and the twins. It's all co-pickatic. co Co-parenting. Co twins, you have three kids? Ain't life something, bro? Right? Keg Stan Craig is a father of three. Yeah, it was my old college nickname. He got it because he did a lot of keg stands. Yeah, we figured. Ah, bro, I hate to be that guy, but I'm in the middle of my daily jog, and I really gotta keep up my heart rate. Brought River along for, you know, resistance training. We could grab breakfast afterwards. Catch up. We could do a bro brunch like the good old days. All right, let's get that going soon. I better get moving. Good to see you guys. Craig gives a little wave, puts his ears by earbuds back in, and jogs off. I can't believe Craig is ripped and has kids. I'm reeling. The Craig I knew is not fit to be responsible for any living thing, including and especially himself. One time, I watched him drink an entire jar of marinara sauce for dinner. Yeah, what's wrong with that? Anyway, we better get home. I'll have plenty of time to reflect on how old I feel later. Amanda and I flop down onto the couch. Amanda has to shove some empty boxes out of the way before she can sit. Oh, and before I forget, Emma R and Emma P are sleeping over tonight. You need me out of the way because I'm a painfully uncool? I would choose more delicate phrasing, but yes, I'm going clubbing. I'm gonna put on a nice outfit and go tear it up on the dance floor. All right, but I'm not gonna come pick you up if you pull anything this time. Just kidding, I'm actually going to go out and watch the game? Nice. Hmm. Which game? You know, the game, the one that's on tonight. The game, on TV. Okay, cool. While you do that, I'm gonna do drugs and commit some light arson with the Emmas. I'm concerned you're hanging with the wrong crowd. I would have expected you guys to be up to white collar crime by this point. Maybe money laundering at the least? Yeah, something you can build a career off of, not like fucking teenage shit. Gotta raise the cooler daughter than that. I do some light cleaning around the house and decide to clear out right before Amanda's friends arrive. Before I leave, Amanda stops me. Hey, don't forget that you have that meeting with my English teacher tomorrow. Oh, right, Mr. Vega. Yep, totally remembered. I'll be there. Time to participate in some light drinking. I got a nice selection. Bar is small and dimly lit. I'm gonna get in the mood, you're right? I'm really about immersion in the games that I play. So I'm gonna go grab another quiet clock. You know, just to, just to get, get, get into it. One beer, please. Her thing, boss. Bartender slides me an ice cold beer. I take a sip and enjoy the refreshing taste. Say, are you Jim or Kim? I'm Neil. <laughs> Oh, a middle-aged woman holding a nearly empty wine glass sidles up to the bar and sits uncomfortably close to me. Hey, sailor. Oh, hello. Good to see fresh meat in here. I'm Mary. Come here often. Oh no, I actually just moved to this part of town today. I'm quite, by the way. Huh. Are you watching the game? Capital T, capital G. Ew, woman! Yeah, my preferred team is in the lead. If they keep this up, they'll win the game with ease. Huh. And also, I love that game. I love someone who knows their way around balls. Guys, I don't want to see any mommy comments. This is the wrong stream to be saying mommy in, all right? Save your fucking mommy comments for a different stream, guys. This is not the place for that. I should ban y'all. I should ban y'all. This is supposed to be a very homosexual stream, and you're really fucking it up for me. She's literally a wine mom, guys. It's not the fun kind of mom. Uh, buy a gallon drink? No, bitch. Uh, maybe some other time. Mary saunters off, setting her sights on the newest bar patron to enter. After a particularly skilled player scores a number of points for the other team, putting them in the lead, I hear an affirmative grunt from another man at the bar. It's the brooding man from the coffee spoon. <gasps> it's spring trap. He sits alone, sipping whiskey and watching the game as well. Enjoying the game? I am now that we're winning. Conversation ends there, and we both go back to silently rooting for our respective teams. I raise a respectful glass at the man drinking whiskey. He raises his in response, an unspoken truth formed between us based on mutual love for the game. He motions to the bar tender who pours two glasses of whiskey. The man slides one over to him. The name's Robert. That's a good name. Mary already hit on you? 
Yeah. Robert chuckles. She's a peach. Well, you picked the best bar in town, as slimy, slimy as it gets. You'll never find a better spot than Jim and Kim's. Is there actually a Jim or a Kim that runs this place? Nope. That'd be nil. Okay, quite. This guy's out of my friend league, but I think if I play my cards right, we'll be pals in no time. Compliment his cool leather jacket. Compliment his hand tattoo. With my luck, it's gonna be a prison tat, and he's, and he's ashamed of it. Compliment his rugged good looks. Ooh, hot damn jacket. Mm, let's go rugged good looks. Your face is good. What are you doing here tonight? My daughter kicked me out of the house. Not like forever. She was having a sleepover with her friends. He gets up. Be right back. Gotta powder my nose. I gotta admit that Robert has a gruff charm to him. If a guy like that thinks I'm cool, then I really must be. Robert comes back from the bathroom and grabs his leather jacket. I'm gonna go home. You headed my way? I live in this cul-de-sac down the way. Of course he fucking does. We get to Robert's house, which is just a few houses away from mine. We stop and he turns to me. I don't kiss and tell quite. So are we doing this or what? You know, you want to come inside or not? A wave of realization rushes over me. I blush. <gasps> it feels so soon. It feels so soon. Oh, it feels so soon. I haven't decided yet. I'm still, I'm still conflicted. Oh, fuck. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Can't, guys. I can't. I just met him. Uh, I'd better call it a night. Catch you around? I head home. Head buzzing with whiskey. What did he mean by, are we going to do this or not? I plop down on the couch and I'm asleep before even I get the chance to take my shoes off. I wake up to a text from an unknown number. Rise and shine, early bird. Still want to work out? This is Craig, by the way. Holy crap, it's 6 a.m. Who does 6 a.m. anymore? Without realizing it, I drift back to sleep. Whoops, must have winked back out. I checked my phone again. Hey, bud, still want to get your swole on? I'm ready to tear up the track. Hit me up. God, the last thing I want to do right now is work out. Hey, my man, I need a few minutes to wake up, but let's meet in 20. After a few seconds, another text comes in. Sure thing, meet me at the gym. Oh, they got a fucking drum and bass song in this? That's a kick-ass backing track. The neighborhood is quiet and serene this early in the morning. Hey, bro, good morning. You're ready to kick some butt with your health? I am. I get the feeling this is going to be a less of me kicking butt and more the gym kicking my butt. But I can handle it with you here. Dude, bro, that means a lot. We head into the gym and I'm immediately intimidated. All these people look like they could break me in half. Where's the baby? You're, listen, you can't like really take a baby to a gym and like super safely work out. You can't use the machines with the baby strapped to your chest. Jogging's easier. So I know we are on treadmills, and those over there are ellipticals. What is all this other stuff? It might look a little scary, but I guarantee that all of them serve a specific purpose for building muscle mass. That's the mo- that's like the most- that's like the reference I think I'm probably most in tune with. It's like, uh, a religious self-flagellation meant to atone for one's sins. You're actually not far off from the truth. Look over to Craig, who hasn't even broken a sweat. How is he doing this so effortlessly? Oh my god, is he really bumping up the speed again? I guess I better do it, too. Oh, this is fast. This is very fast. We were at that party and you vowed to make me feel better. You told me to create a distraction, so of course I do a sick keg stand and get everyone cheering. Try to steal a fish from a fish tank at a party with my bare hands like an idiot. And then you drop the fish and it's flopping around and you panic, so you run up to a me post keg stand with a dying, dirty fish in your hand that you scooped off of the ground and you're yelling at me that we have to leave. So we're running out of a frat party with a fish and trying to give it mouth to mouth resuscitation. We get him home and get him into a bowl of water with the prognosis was grim. And the next day he He's uh, alive and well. I shoot off the end of the treadmill and crash into the wall. Jesus, that hurts. Nice. Craig offers me a hand and looks me over for industry. Well, I think I might call our gym adventure here. Oh. You sure? All right, well, here, I brought you this. He hands me a shaker bottle full of a thick green li liquid. It's a protein shake, bro. He wants me to drink it. Oh boy, here it goes. I take a small sip. It's actually delicious. Let me know if you, uh, if treadmills aren't your speed, no pun intended, bro. I leave the gym feeling ashamed. Craig used to order delivery from the pizza place across the street from our dorm, and now he can run circles around me. Literally. Man, I really gotta work on this dad bod. I don't get it. I chose the athletic body type. I should be fucking, like, I should be just as fast as him. I get home and lie down on the couch. It hurts to move. Oh god, I'm so old. Oh no, I must have fallen asleep. What time is it? Shoot, it's 3.55. I'm supposed to be at Amanda's school in five minutes. Youth turns around and looks me up and down with heavily lined eyes. Come on, kid, I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? I don't know. Have you tried the exit? Lucian, don't you have a third period to get to? Oh, good god. Oh, good god. <sighs> Fine, Mr. Vega. Ah. Wow, now I'm officially 10 minutes late. Mr. Vega leads me in and I take a seat in one of the comically small students' desks in the back. The bell for the end of the period rings. All of the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. Mr. Vega turns to me and sighs. Oh. Middle schoolers, right? Don't you teach high schoolers? Uh. Both, you know. Budget cuts. I don't normally do these impromptu parent-teacher meetings, but as I'm sure you know, Amanda's a very bright student and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. Amanda has never been the most engaged student. But I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. But Amanda had always shared everything with me. I hadn't even crossed my mind that something might be wrong. Yeah, that sounds like a parent. So, so, 
Freddy Fazbear, dude? Oh, uh, why do I see it with like a fucking bow tie too, dude? Well, we just moved recently, but it was only to the other side of town, and Amanda was more excited about it than I was. Uh. I leave the classroom and make my way out to school. I'm, Seema, I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well for me. She's always been such a force for positivity in my life, especially after we lost her father. I pull up to the carpool and Amanda hops in the passenger seat. So did you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Vega and I actually just gossiped about our celebrity crushes. It's a very productive meeting. I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Does that sound good to you? Yeah, sure. Why the mall? Can a dad take his daughter to the mall? Will you buy me things? I will buy you a thing. Singular. We arrive at the mall, a big indoor shopping center with a couple different floors. Let's eat something disgusting for dinner. Hell yeah. Language, Missy. Heck yeah. Here's my rule. If YouTube, like, wouldn't demonetize me for it, my kid can say it. You order a giant pile of chips and a naturally orange cheese from a very unenthusiastic and possibly stoned teenager. Can you explain memes to me? God damn it. God damn it. Fuck. There's that. That's not an answerable question. Memes are a language, not a singular thing that has a definition. All. All meme. Mm -hmm. This is how I felt as like a 2018 commentary YouTuber telling my fans to text their parents a fucking fried, like a cursed fried meme and like get the reactions. Amanda sighs deeply and places her head in her hands. That's a really fucking succinct explanation. Amanda runs into the store with me trailing behind her. She makes a beeline for the back. Oh hey, chain wallets. While Amanda busies herself at looking at band t-shirts, I try to find something interesting to myself. Let's look at ironic mugs. If there's only one number one dad, then why are there so many good mugs here that say that? This whole time I thought I was the only one. It's a fucking vampire? What the hell? Hey Dadtron 5000. Yes, I'll buy it for you. Wow, that was easy. Thanks. Cashier says nothing and rings Amanda up, radiating hatred. Cashier rolls her eyes, so I'm worried she pull, she'll pull something. She hands Amanda her bag and it's clear the combo is over. We make our way out the store and head home. Morning, sleepyhead. Five more minutes. You have never ever let me have five more minutes, so get up. Seriously, what the fuck is my job? What do I do? Are you excited for the cookout? Excited to beef up my grilling skills. I'll see this as a learning opportunity. Dad, you're a beautiful work in progress. We will get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. Well, we better start getting ready. We definitely don't want to be late. What? No, we have to be fashionably late. Who shows up to a cookout on time? Joseph's backyard is already packed with people, and the smell of hot dogs wafts her through the air. Hey, there's Joseph. I wait to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs over. Arbs open wide. Welcome. I'm so glad you two are here. Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come on over here. This is Chris, yeah. my eldest. Hi. Yeah. This is Christian and Christy. They're twins. Whoa. They stare creepily and say nothing. Then, of course, there's our youngest, Chris. Wait, where is Chris? Maybe Mary put him in his crib. Oh, no. It's the woman from the bar the other night. Fuck. I'm so... Dude, I'm really glad I did not buy her a drink. <laughs> Shit, that would have been fucking awkward. I'd shake your hand, but I have a glass of wine that I need to tend to. I love her. Nice to, uh, meet you, Mary. For the first time. Charmed. Well, I have to go over there now. All of these people live in our cul-de-sac? That can't be right. I better investigate. Matt and Hugo seem to be embroiled in an intense discussion. Craig looks on, smiling politely. I walk over to say hello. Hey, look, his kid stopped blowing a snot bubble. Isn't it funny how I fit in with the art style of the game? I turn my attention to Craig, who seems a little more attentive to my existence. How'd resistance training go the other day? Great. Little River here is a great cheerleader. Aren't you, tiny bro? Dwight, how are you liking the neighborhood? It's pretty nice. Everybody's been super friendly. Seems like your daughter is fitting in just fine. Matt points across the yard to where Amanda, Daisy, and another young girl are playing. They're all sitting cross-legged in the grass, picking weeds, weaving them into little flower crowns. It's pretty adorable. Matt takes the flower crown and places it on top of his head. Am I cool now? The girl stares at him, thinking it over. You're slightly less uncool than you were before you put it on. Amanda comes over with Daisy in tow. Dad, look, I'm making friends. Are you making friends? You better be making friends. Yeah, actually, Amanda, you remember the cool barista from the coffee shop and my old college friend and, uh, your teacher? <laughs> Hugo looks around the party. He must finally spot him because huh? his eyes go wide. Ernest, Ernest Hemingway Vega, are you smoking? Mm -hmm. Ernest is holding a lit cigarette. I see Ernest across the way. Yeah, he casually takes a long drag of a cigarette, then flicks it into a gutter. Unbelievable. Excuse me. Hugo marches over to Ernest, and I turn my attention to Matt and Craig. Man, I do not envy Hugo. The last barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shove a sparkler down Joseph's pants. Hugo walks over to us, practically dragging Ernest behind him. Hey, everybody. Sorry about that. Quite. This is my son, Ernest. Where the fuck did he get the cigarette? Ernest looks away, sulking. His hands shoved deep in his pockets. Okay, okay, I'm in eighth grade. Damn, smoking that young. Can I go now? I'm tired of talking to old dudes who blame my generation for the failing economy. He shouldn't be smoking, but like he was right. Like he's telling the truth. Ernest puts earbuds in and storms off to stand in the corner. Well, that was that was certainly something. As much as I want to be the cool dad, I have to be the authoritarian dad, and he clearly resents me for it. Amanda's 18 and she still thinks I'm cool. I yell across the yard to my daughter. Amanda, I'm cool, right? Amanda just laughs. She keeps laughing. I glance across the yard and notice Robert and Brian chatting over drinks. Man, I don't think I want to deal with being one up by Brian or 
Whatever happened with Robert last night. Wait, have you met Robert yet? Robert regards me over his whiskey. We were just talking about my most recent camping trip. It's great that she loves the outdoors. Mine loves being inside. Daisy doesn't really get along with kids her age. Hmm. It's nice that he's not trying to one-up me this time. Maybe we can have a regular friendship after all. I think the other kids are intimidated by her intelligence. <sighs> It sounds like your kid's a fucking loser. <laughs> well, since they're getting along so well, maybe we should try to put together a little play date for them? They do seem to get along really well. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Go meet some of the other fellas. So I'm curious, can you walk me through why you had your house painted black? Where do I even start? The house stays warmer in the winter, it provides an artistic contrast to the rest of the neighborhood, and it complements the crimson interior perfectly. Quite. I was just having a conversation with Damien here about his aesthetic design decisions. Damien's face turned bright red. I must apologize for my behavior on that day. I take the goth lifestyle very seriously, and to be caught in a ruse by such a corporation as Dead Goth and Beyond was profoundly frustrating indeed. I think for a second, I look over to Amanda, who's hanging out with some of the older kids in the neighborhood. Hey Amanda, would you consider yourself goth? Amanda yells back. I wouldn't necessarily necessarily try to fall under any one specific label, but if I had to choose, I would more describe myself as twee hipster with some norm core leanings. Are you enjoying the party so far? Thanks so much for putting this on. It's nice to be in a cul-de-sac where everyone is so more friendly and welcoming. Damien Bloodmarch. His fucking last name is Bloodmarch? Blessed, blessed by like hair, like heritage, bro. Like you were destined for this. Seemingly out of nowhere, Joseph's twin kids appear, uh, are they speaking in unison? Don't you come play with us? Guys, I hate to tell you this, but fucking Joseph's off the, off the, the roster. Guys, enough with the creepy twin shtick. We We've, we've talked about this. Mary takes a long sip of the wine. Oh my God. I think I might have taped over a VeggieTales VHS with The Shining. Ew, woman. Man, it's so wild how all of us dads live in the same cul-de-sac. Kinda nice, isn't it? It feels like there's a real community here. Totally helps when you're just a single dad trying to raise a kid. Uh -huh. Hey, why don't you all add us on Dad Book? Yeah, it's a great social network for dads to keep in touch with each other. Christ, we're all on it, so if you ever need to reach out to anyone, that's the simplest way to do it. Sorry, I'm just an old-fashioned dad. Social media goes over my head sometimes. Amanda and I walk back to our place as the sun sets over the neighborhood. I mean, I got a burger in me. I felt like I was at a networking event. You and Daisy seemed like you were having a way better time than I was. Because we were. Well, hey, at least you met some other cool dads. You should hit them up on Dadbook. I have a good feeling about this place. Me too, dad. Oh, my throat is like raw right now, dog. I am parched. The stream's not over, by the way. Uh, but by the way, did you know if you're watching this on YouTube, you missed out on all the gay stuff live? Kind of cringe. On twitch.tv slash quite on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Be here.